Because okay. you can bless the candles any day. Yeah, any day. But, but there's a specific blessing which the church specific. gives on the day of the presentation. On the day of the presentation. Yeah. But why did they choose that day? There are many symbols that we use for Our Lady. But I think one of the most beautiful symbols for her is actually the blessed candle. I knew we would be talking about the blessed candle, but I didn't imagine that we would say something like this about Our Lady. And <laughs> no, no true mother, no Christian mother would refuse to feed her baby, saying that no, I just want to take care of the soul, as the, the spirit, and that's it. The body, yeah, forget about no, because that's, that's not your true mother. Church being our mother, the three days of the darkness. Three days of darkness. Yes. Yeah. There is a revelation. Aaj, Aaj, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this light that was spread in the world will not go out. That's no. what the blessed candle is, right? Because the Catholic Church cannot die. But there are moments we look today and looks like the Church has, so to speak, died. Yeah. Blessed candles. Are they not a superstition? As Catholics, as Christians, do we have a right to believe in such things? Some people say that the world is going to be dark and the blessed candle can turn it into day. Others believe in storms which a blessed candle can drive away, and so on and so forth. As a Catholic, do we have the, even the right to use candles? But then we have candles at Mass. What is the role of candles, and especially blessed candles, in the life of a Catholic according to true Orthodox theology? That's what we'll be talking about today. Salve Maria, and welcome once again to Mary Our Queen, the podcast of the Slaves of Our Lady. We have with us Reverend Brother Vincent Vasi. Thank you. And Brother Nimish Koyali once again. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> so, bless candles, Brother Vincent. Let's talk about candles to begin with. Why does a church use candles? Isn't it something, uh, a reminiscence of paganism? In the past, before the church began, the pagans still already used candles. And much more so, even today you find all sorts of witchcraft and all sorts of strange things outside. They do use candles. So is it not wrong on the church's part to use candles? No, I wouldn't say it's wrong because we have to see where does the where do candles why does the church yeah. use the candles? Where does that come from? And like you mentioned there, the blessed candles that comes from the the history. You say it's from the time of the presentation of our Lord in the temple. Wow! Oh. So that's where the the why, that's why it had the blessed candles on the second of February. Because the 2nd of February is the Feast of the Presentation. Mm, because okay. you can bless the candles any day. Yeah, any day. But, but there's a specific blessing which the church specific. gives on the day of the presentation. On the day of the presentation. Yeah. But why did they choose that day? And if you remember there in, in, in the Gospel of the, that feast day, when the, our Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, Holy Family entered the temple, and St. Simeon, he saw the child Jesus and received the child Jesus in his arms, he said, I have seen the light for the Gentiles and the salvation of Israel. Mm, so yes. that's the thing, he, our Lord is, he's the light of the, of the world. So that's where the original, the whole, why we have, mm. the, the can, and the candle symbolizes the light of Christ, as we also know from yeah. the Paschal candle too, is the, it's the light of Christ. So. In Advent also, there's a whole symbolism of the candles, of the candle. slowly lighting up the darkness with the coming yeah. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, so it's, you see, it's a different, and it's all these, in the history, unfortunately, nowadays, people have forgotten. Yeah. They don't, yeah. because the, the blessed candle is a sacramental. Because we all know for, in the baptism of a child, you use the, the blessed, a blessed candle. Yeah. First communion, the child's holding a blessed, blessed candle. candle. And also, when someone's dying, the church recommends to have that blessed candle burning until the person gives her their yeah. final breath because of that. There are some people who, who keep, and it's a very good practice, when the child is born, from the baptism onwards, the parents, they guard, they protect the, the candle of the baptism. Yeah. I've heard cases of people who on their deathbed, they light the same candle it's when the they go to candle. die. Yeah. It's a very beautiful symbolism because the candle represents the light of faith and that you're supposed to remain with you your whole life. And it's consumed, not that the faith is consumed, the faith is a fire which comes out, but you're giving yourself, giving. You're, uh, you're donating yourself to God so that your faith can live. And that same candle which you were given into your baptism, it re remains as a deathbed, is something very symbolic. Yeah, it's like passing that, that light that was, yeah. when you were baptized, receiving, becoming a child of God, stay with you for your whole life, and it's yeah. there to, to be with you until the end of, of your life. I heard uh, uh, like a symbolism of, this, of, a, of a candle, of the candle. I don't know if, if you can see, if, tell me if it's right or wrong. It says that um, it, the candle has the wick, right? The wick? Yes. 
and then we have the wax around it. Yeah. So the wick represents uh, the what do you call it? Um, the divinity of our Lord and the wax. Well, the was it? Well, I think it was Saint Anselm that mentioned. Yeah. That there was the symbolism of the why in the early church they used to use beeswax yeah. and all mm -hmm. that too. Is that the the wax was the symbol. Of because the beeswax, the original, the one, the beeswax yeah. would come. There was the virgin bees that would get that would make the beeswax. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the the wax that was a symbolism of Our Lady giving well, to our Lord. the flesh to because to our Lord. The candle oh. represents our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the whole candle represents because the so the wax represents the body of our Lord. Okay. The wick represents the soul of our Lord. Oh, the soul, and then the yes. flame burning there is a divinity. Okay. Of our yes, Lord, Saint, Saint Anselm said there, and then burning in the wax, in the candle burning, and everything is showing how our Lord gave Himself completely <laughs> for the salvation of. This is very everyone. beautiful because many of the objections that people place against the Church, especially against sacramentals, is because of a lack of knowledge of what they really mean. Yeah. Because we human beings are made of body and soul, and our Lord Jesus Christ. He did not come as a pure spirit. He came with his body. Yeah. He worked the miracles with his body. He touched people. He there was a case when he spat on the floor. He made uh, use of saliva yeah, sal and so on and so forth. There were many miracles you read in the Bible. Of you had to use, uh, for example, the liver of the fish to cure uh, Tobias, Tobias uh, yes, yeah. Yeah. his blindness, and so on and so forth. But God made his body and soul, and He wants us to adore Him, to serve Him, yep. using our body and soul. And the church knows that. The church is a mother, of course. No, no true mother, no Christian mother, would refuse to feed the child, the, her baby, saying that no, I just want to take care of the soul, so as the, the spirit, and that's it. The body, yeah, forget about no, because that's not their true mother. The church being a mother, she takes care of our soul. She takes care of her body to help our soul. And just like she has this true doctrine, the truth for the soul, she has symbols for our body to perceive, yeah. to follow, and Jesus did that as well. He did not need baptism. He did not need water to baptize. He could have baptized by his own power, no. But yeah. he wanted man to use Used water, the water to... which is a symbol of purity, of cleanliness. He wanted the to form the Eucharist. He used bread, bread and wine, which was a normal food, which is a normal food. He could have taken a, something special, which man did not eat, no. He decided, he chose to use something that we usually eat, something which is delicious to eat, excellent bread yeah. with good wine. Mm -hmm. uh, and something that's available all the time. Right? Exactly. And, and it's like, but like you said, because we're, we're body yeah. and soul. Yeah. So if it's something just the theory part there, but you have, we have to have something that yeah. we can, we can feel, we can. We that can, is the role of liturgy in the church. Liturgy turns our life, turns uh, in a very perceptible manner, the higher reality is represented. Right. Of course, it's interesting that you mentioned a little while ago, brother, the sacramentals. Because I guess many of those who are watching us don't know. In the church, we have the sacraments and the sacramentals. So the baptism, the Holy Communion are sacraments. They were instituted by our Lord Jesus Christ himself. They are in the Bible. Yeah. And they produce grace by their own merit. They are much more powerful for our salvation. Well, sacramentals are what some of the saints call sort of secondary sacraments. They don't, they're not as powerful yeah. because they were created by the church, not by our Lord. But nevertheless, our Lord gave power to the church to create these so to call minor sacraments. Yeah. And they can help us go to salvation as well. They can help us on our path to salvation and the candles are among them. Yeah. Or fight against the devil. Yeah. Or fight for our, our own salvation, everything, because yeah. we need all the help we can because... Yeah. As we know the world nowadays, if you don't have, and that's why our Lord gave us these. Yeah, I think one of the errors of this of the world is one is that that they give too much emphasis on material things, without any connection Change with the spiritual, the spiritual thing. Right? Yeah, and the other error is they only talk about spiritual things, and they have no sacraments. They have nothing palpable, and. Uh, yeah. But the church is the only one that that takes both into consideration, like the the symbols they, they have. They, they go hand in hand with. Yeah. They with touch the something of and, the spirit, the, of the the symbolic. The material things have a link with the spiritual thing. Yeah, because either way, and either era, deep inside you're going against God's plan of creation. God made angels as pure spirits, and they glorify God by worshiping Him as pure spirits. Yeah, God made man body and soul. And he wants us to glorify him using our body and soul. So if I forget the soul or if I forget the body, either way, the devil is happy because you're not doing what God wants.
That's, and I think yeah. that's why that that's what you said in the beginning about uh, they that they use candles in occult practices and things. Yeah, yeah. But that's because they put all the uh, they give the candle, they make the candle kind of a god. Right? Exactly. Know, give the power to the candle, but it's not the yeah. power is on the it's in the symbolism, right? Exactly. So much so that the word the vice of superstition, because religion is a virtue, and moral virtues you can sin with them in two senses, either to exaggeration. or through an excess so to speak yeah. or when you don't have enough of it so a person who is faithless and infidel who is an atheist he sins against the virtue against uh, like the faith is not even a moral virtue it's a theological virtue yeah. he sins against faith by not having enough of faith but there are others who sin by so to speak an excess of faith not that they believe too much in god mm. but they attribute divine properties yeah. to that so, god is not god yeah So a candle is when you believe that a candle has power within itself, independent of what God gives it, independent of what the church gave to it, the symbolism given by the church. Then yes, you are sinning with superstition. Yeah. But then, if you don't, once the church has used it as a sacramental, when you don't respect it, when you don't give it the value that mm. it should have, you can sin again. You, you can True. go against the uh, you can go against faith from the other side, the other, the and you can do either way. The devil is still happy with you. Oh yeah! As long as you don't do what God wants you to do, you can fall to either side, mm-hmm. and the devil applauds you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's those yeah when the the people they just you find out like you said the superstition there yeah, they decide to oh I don't know in their house to well because it's a blessed candle so I'll put I'm exaggerating yeah. but a hundred candles so it's, it, yeah. it's not. Because if you have the, that candle, that you're going to be, I mean, you're going to you be can, saved. You can have all the candles in the world, but if you die well, in a state of mortal sin, you're not going to be yeah. saved. Yeah, that's that's the thing. There we have to practice, yeah, the virtue. We have to follow God's law. We have to. It's not just. And a candle is an aid for you when you're going through a serious temptation. When you're going through something sacramentals, they can aid you practice a the virtue. They can. Let's suppose that there have been cases, there have been miraculous cases with all sort of sacramentals. But let's suppose that you have somebody in your house who is away from religion, who's sick, who's dying, and you want to give him, or you want to give her, uh, bring her back to the church before she passes away. For example, let's yeah. imagine this case. It would be very pious of the person's part to put a uh, blessed candle in the room, light it, asking our Lord. To consider the candle, the blessing that the church gave to the candle, to take that into consideration, to give graces to the person who is dying. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. As a Catholic, you don't have to go through the whole reasoning every time. It would yeah. not be wrong if you yeah. don't think of all the theology. But that is implicit when you light a candle. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, if you think that is a candle itself doing that, the candle that, itself is going to do it. But then again, most of the time, people get this right. It is, there are rarer case, cases because True. you don't have to fall into scruples as well. No, when I lit a candle last Wednesday, did I actually think that it was? Did I attribute? Normally you don't do that. You do fall to superstition is when you don't want to change your life, when you don't want to do yeah. good, and you expect the candle to save you. Yes, then it's superstition. Yeah. So Let's yeah, see. I remember before I met the Harrells. Yeah. I had this, I this these doubts, right? Uh, oh no, how much is too much, and how? Yeah, yeah. about uh, are we overusing, giving too much importance to the sacrament, and and what if what if my scapula breaks one day, and uh, you know this yeah. kind of things, so yeah. scruples, like as you said. Exactly. Uh, but uh, one thing that resolved my scruples was when I did my consecration to Our Lady. You know, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you. It's she. She takes care of it. Right? She's yeah. like a mother. You don't uh, have to worry about um, putting too much salt in the, in the, yeah, in yeah. the su- soup. Or whatever. Can, yeah. I don't know how theologically precise my words are. How to study this? But let's say, in a way of speaking, in a certain sense, the person who does a consecration to Our Lady, so to yeah. speak, becomes a sacramental. Because right. we are just like a candle after the blessing. That candle has changed something. Now it's a blessed candle after a consecration. We are. That's what Saint Louis de Montfort says. We are separated members of Our Lady. It's as though I have an arm here and I have a, that would be absurd. It'd be monstrous in a human being. But let's suppose I have another arm over there which does what I want. That is what a slave of Our Lady is because we are we belong to her entirely. We mm-hmm. are slaves of love, and we do, at least we are supposed to do what she does. We receive all the graces that God gives her. They come to us. We are other Marys. Yes, other Marys. Yeah. yeah, that is what the consecration is. It's very beautiful yeah. that it is true, and all slaves of Our Lady 
of course this this uh, this podcast as we said in the beginning is a podcast for the slaves of our lady but then again i assume that there may be many of who, you who are watching us now who have not done the consecration to our lady it's a very beautiful moment which all the heralds have gone through and thousands of people all over the world it's something which changes lives if you want to find out more about doing your consecration to our lady click on the link in the description and it's a totally this is not something that we charge for or something the only thing you have to give is your heart to our lady it's free you don't have to pay for it but it's something very beautiful and it actually does change lives of people and families so for all those who not done it yet i invite you to take a look at least there's a link in the description but so to speak when the person is consecrated mm-hmm. we belong to our lady we belong to her yeah and if the person is faithful to the consecration every slave of our lady It's like a lamp lit in this world. It's like a candle lit in a dark room. Because I don't know if you remember uh, the Easter Vigil. That's one of the most impressive, the most beautiful liturgies in the whole Catholic year. Oh, true. On It's the on Saturday night, when the Mass where Easter is proclaimed, where it actually does become Easter liturgically. Normally, the Mass starts outside the church, and there's a new fire. And the liturgy, and it's in darkness. It's in the darkness. In darkness. It has to be in the in darkness. darkness. Yeah, has to the be. The sun needs to have set, and it, the liturgy asks that all the lights in the region should be off. You should not have any lights, any electrical mm-hmm. lights on. The only light possible allowed. It's part of the rubrics of the exactly yeah. is the is a fire. It's a natural fire with wood, which is lit over there, which is called the new fire. Now, this fire represents that during the whole Old Testament. It was the whole world was in darkness, and there was no grace, there was no faith. All of mm. this was given to mankind after the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ mm. through the Catholic Church. Now, this fire symbolizes that in the middle of this darkness, there was a bit of hope, which was a Jewish nation, because they had the revelation they had received from Abraham, from Moses, yeah, the true and they religion had, at the time. Exactly, the little bit of light in the world came through to them, but. in a certain sense it was still a prefigure they did not have all the grace which actually man would receive the first time in history that all the grace a man would receive entered mankind entered the history of humanity the history of salvation was when our lady was born because she was already born in grace in grace mm-hmm. she started enjoying the fruits of the redemption of our lord jesus christ before our lord was even born before he was conceived yes, that's yeah. something yeah so like then you she's the first light to start exactly She is the first light in the, the darkness. darkness. Yeah. yeah, she is the one. And, and as slaves of Our Lady, we are called to be the same in today's world, in this world of sin. Because the Catholic Church cannot die, but there are moments we look today and looks like the Church has, so to speak, died. Yeah. We imagine can can there be something worse than what is happening? Everything that the Church is passing through, all the turmoils, all the sufferings, all the if we don't have to enter into that at the moment. But in the middle of all that, the true slave of Our Lady is a candle lit in the dark place. Of course, the darkness can can grow, can take over, but the darkness can never fight against light. True. No. It, it Doesn't matter. You can get a room that's pitch black, and you light a little little candle. It already exactly the room is not dispels, dark anymore. It is it expels the, yeah. the darkness, and it's the darkness is impossible. It can't take over the the darkness yeah. can never fight light. Yeah. It can only flee. Yeah. At the most, what yeah, it can do is try to pull the candle out. Exactly. Yeah. And that is what we have to try and for for fight always that our light of faith in this world that we are blessed candles much more the candles that we use are symbols of our own faith and just like the candles should always remain a light our own faith should always, always remain be. true and firm in this sense blessed candle today has a much greater importance than it had let's say in the middle ages for example because back then it was a symbol yeah. of of many beautiful things but today it's a symbol of every catholic yeah I was thinking about what he said. I think someone might raise an objection. Yeah. Uh saying that you said that our lady was the first light in this world. What if it's not our Lord Jesus Christ? But I was thinking about this these days. Uh of course we celebrate the feast of the presentation, no? The yeah. the blessed the candles are blessed on the feast of the presentation. We're going to celebrate this very soon. That is why we are putting up this podcast. Yes. The day before. Hopefully the podcast will come out on this on on that day. Yeah. Uh, so and so what happens is uh we see there's there's a part in in that whole scene of the presentation like he said there was a part when uh, the saint the saint simeon, simeon said uh, got the child in his arms says light for the uh, light revealed to the nation etc but is and he told our lady after that or before that was that that a sword will pierce your own heart right yeah and remember you mentioned one in, once in another podcast that we never saw a sword piercing our lady's heart yeah 
the sword or the lance, something that pierced somebody's heart was the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ heart. So I think that's where he made that. Uh, Since Simeon is the theologian of of this, <laughs> uh, that Our Lady and Our Lord have the same heart, right? Yeah. He was the first time somebody yes. said that. Yeah. Of course, it's Catholic theology would study much more. For example, Saint John used to talk about it, that Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, though physically apart, mystically, theologically, they form one single heart. Yes. And Saint Simeon was the first theologian to realize that. And it's interesting what he said now. Yes, because how can uh, Our Lord is God, and the only reason that He can suffer as a man is because of Our Lady, right? I, yeah. Our Lady. The whole, her whole life, she was sustaining our Lord in that humanity. Yeah, uh, because in a certain sense, yes. Yes, yeah. in a certain sense, right? Yeah, because our Lord chose to depend on Our Lady. Chose our Lord did not require to become a man uh, with all the weaknesses that we have, but He chose freely of His own will to be a man, weak like all of us, with all the with all the difficulties, with all the necessities that normal man has, and something necessary that every man needs to be able to keep up. Mm. Is some mutual support. No, yes. None of us True. can live absolutely alone. None of us can live without somebody on this earth who's helping us, who's supporting us. Who's exactly. It's exactly. part of being human, yeah, right? And that's, that's what our Lord, <laughs> our Lord yeah. needed that from our lady. Our Lord needed somebody on this earth. Also, there are, that's basically, basically the whole symbology of Holy Saturday. Holy yes. Saturday is when the world is enveloped in darkness. Mm. There's one blessed candle which is sustaining the whole world. That is the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yeah. Because there are theologians who sustain that. After the death of our Lord, when even the apostles had fled, when there was no faith on this earth, if the faith had absolutely died after the maximum gift of God towards man, which is redemption, if the faith had died, right then the end of the world would have come. Because it would have been unbearable for God to be able to sustain that. After all this, everything that he did, everything, everything he gave, totally team. ungrateful. Nobody wanted to use what he got. Exactly what yeah. he said. And Our Lady was that blessed candle. Her faith. She was the only one that maintained the faith. And yeah. And of course, it's beautiful because just like on Easter Vigil, we have the blessed candle and we have the other candles start lighting up on them. The first people who were faithful, St. John the Evangelist, was because he was a spiritual son of Our Lady. The holy ladies, the holy women, yeah. because they were around Our Lady. It was her flame that kept up the whole humanity until Our Lord would resurrect and everything would start once again. But she was the blessed but candle. Everything comes through her. Yeah. It's like yeah. our Lord, Jesus came to the world yeah. through our blessed mother. And then also, like you said there, she was the only one that maintained the faith. Yeah. And it spread out from her. And then yeah. we go until the, the, uh, the descent of the Holy Spirit. It came yeah. upon Our Lady first, and then from there it went yeah, to impressive. the apostles, and it went. Yeah. So you see, she's always in the yeah. she's in she's in the center. God, why? Because God wanted it. I mean, yeah. it's on the on the cross. Uh, uh, before our Lord died, He kind of put His life into Our Lady. Uh, he <laughs> He gave Saint John to her. He gave the Church to say uh, the Our Lady to Saint to, John. To, yeah, and then He died, and the sword pierced His heart after He died. What is uh, exactly. and the only one who who felt that pierce was our lady, right? There, she was pain, she was yeah. living the life of our Lord yeah. during that. In fact, there are theologians who have seen this that there are uh, we know very well that there have been saints in history who had the grace of Eucharistic permanence. They would receive our Lord once the Holy Blessed Sacrament, and until the next time they would receive communion, the Blessed Host right. would remain within them without being consumed. Mm -hmm. So they were, so to speak, living tabernacles. living tabernacles. All of us are living tabernacles of the Holy Trinity because of the grace of baptism. Which saint, for example? You know, now you get I me. Do you remember somebody who... St. Anthony Mary Claret, no? I he was one of them. I remember it? reading about this number of times, but now I'm lost. He was St. Anthony Mary Claret. St. Anthony Mary Claret? Yeah. Well, and there's, there's some other now. St. Catherine of Siena. Was no, she lived Catherine only on the Blessed Sacrament. But I don't she know if she had the presence. Had the Eucharistic continuously. presence. Constant. We'll take a look at this after. Uh, yeah, we'll mention another podcast. That's yeah, an interesting theme. St. Thomas Aquinas, no. 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 At there least it's not known. I mean, we don't know about. Mm -hmm. But in any case, now, it is a, uh, since Our Lady is a meatrix of all graces, and all the graces come through her to the rest of mankind. Yeah. We know that all the graces which anybody has received, Our Lady has also received. And any glory any that any saint has received if it could be convenient to Our Lady's state of life, the theologians who say, yeah. the Mariologists who teach this, she also received them. 
there are some which would not be convenient for her mission at least externally such as uh, it's a glory to die uh, burnt alive as a martyr like some saints have been yeah but for our lady's our lady's role she could not do that she went through martyrdom she went in her through soul my, in her soul with the, yeah, in yeah. the crucifixion Worse than, than yeah. uh, being burnt but yeah. she she had to be assumed to heaven so it did not it was not convenient for her it was not proper for her to receive yeah. that external yeah. glory of uh, being yes. but whatever would be convenient whatever was would possible be, our god gave her everything the one that fitting, fitting one that's fitting. not exactly. a grace that you could say that's not fitting our lady had no necessity was of repentance yeah because she she didn't have that she didn't so that's sin didn't have sin but in yeah. all the other ones all the other yeah. graces everything else she participated she yeah. wasn't a martyr physically a martyr but she in is. her soul she yeah. suffered martyrdom more than that's why exactly. she's the queen of all martyrs yeah Yes, the so grace of martyrdom came through her, right? Yeah. Uh, was, exactly. So now, uh, this applies to the Eucharist as well. So if there were some saints who had Eucharistic permanence in, their, in, their, in, in themselves, yeah. Our Lady had it had also. It. Therefore, at the crucifixion, it was after the Last Supper, Our Lady had the Blessed Sacrament within her. Hmm. And what happened to our Lord outside was happening, happening to her to inside. inside. So what you said, that our Lord gave himself, gave his life to her, can be theologically spoken about yes it's not something it's not just uh, yes. pious opinion no yeah. in fact it did happen within her our lord was within her yeah. and our lord continued on this earth he never left earth after or even after his death he was always, always present, present within us continues within us within the church in the blessed sacrament always but it's always our lady who was there yeah, you could uh, say that because of that she suffered within herself yeah. the separation of the body and soul exactly. of our lord mm -hmm. when he died mm -hmm. She felt that with, because with the Eucharistic presence, she felt that in, yeah. So it's one of these everything. That's There are many symbols that we use for Our Lady, but I think one of the most beautiful symbols for her is actually the blessed candle, because true in, in her life, throughout her life, she was a candle. She was the candle, she, and she gave everything. Yeah. She didn't hold anything back for herself. Exactly. She consumed yeah, herself. She, she consumed herself. Yeah. She, although, could you like you said, that wasn't a martyrdom, a physical one there, but she. And yeah, I she guess just burnt until the very end. She, mm -hmm. In a sense, because it's not that she everything disappeared. Is that she received so much, so much, so she, much by giving herself she was so then, empty of her herself so, and yeah. full yeah. Of, of God, and that's why she and then she was assumed into heaven because there was no more physical room. You could say, were grace yeah. in it, but in her to a certain confirmation of this is that we find in the Bible is that on the Pentecost, like you said. Uh, the holy spirit descended upon her and then on the apostles, apostles yeah. yeah now the holy spirit chose tongues of fire it's something again symbolic of being consumed of consumed. giving yourself yeah also something very beautiful that saint saint the saint of auschwitz saint oh, maximilian kolbe yeah. yeah he said that being the spouse of our, la our lady being the spouse of the holy spirit whatever can be said about the holy spirit yeah. can be applied to our lady And since the Holy Spirit represents Himself through fire, fire. as a flame, mm. it's very fitting to call Our Lady also a flame, true. as a fire, that's, as a candle. That's true. Is. That's you see yeah. how beautiful Catholic uh, Catholic culture, Catholic so, life is. No, if you so just rich in rich yeah, in the traditions and, and the meanings and the yeah, if you take time to think about it, uh, the more you think, the more you meditate, you always have more lessons. And I mean, the church has got enough, enough uh, liturgy, enough beautiful symbolisms that we can go till the end of the world without ever running out. Yeah, like, because the church is what the mystical body of Christ, yeah. and Christ is the second person yeah. of the Holy Trinity. So it's inf he's infinite. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how. What there's always going to be something new. Yeah. We can't say no, no. Now the church is already okay. Explicitate everything. It's impossible because for all of eternity in heaven, you're going to be finding something new about yes. about God. I don't know if you remember in the divine office there's a reading we read I think one of the fathers of the church tell me if one of you remember it comes every year I forget who the author is but the meditation is extremely beautiful he speaks about the word of god which the church imparts to us like mm -hmm. a fountain and then we go and drink and we go and drink again and then we go and drink again mm -hmm. and he says so don't feel rejected that you can't empty the fountain but the fountain is infinite it's yeah. the yeah. church giving yes. what comes from god And in fact, if you were able to drink the whole fountain, it would be a bad thing because you would feel thirsty in the future. But yeah, there's no risk true. of that. Yeah. You can go as go back as much as you, you want, want on the earth to the church, and you'll always have something more, something new. Yeah. And for example, uh, when 
we were preparing for this podcast i i knew we would be talking about the blessed candles but i didn't imagine that we would say something like this about <laughs> our lady and <laughs> like this I mean, is yeah. something uh, everything that we said was it's something which comes from the grace of the moment it's something yes. which depends on but it shows the richness of the church exactly yeah. that's what I, is yeah. that it's like you said there's always there's always going to be something new yeah how long have the gospels been commented throughout history yeah but there's always something Exactly. There's something new there's something else that comes out it's because a saint not just a saint a true catholic priest he can spend his whole life every day getting a new meditation getting something new it's fun yeah and uh, no matter what state he is no matter he doesn't have to of course it is good when a priest when a religious studies the fathers of the church studies the saints it's something not just good something necessary to study to be able to preach but then the simple the profundity the depth of the simplicity of the gospel yeah. when the person stops to meditate you always get new lessons you always Because, get something but it's true that the holy spirit is always yeah he's always there he's inspiring, inspiring. and it, yeah he's going to there's always going to be something it's like with our blessed mother too like yeah. there's always going to be something new the saint saint uh, saint louis de montfort said that there's you can never say enough about yeah. our lady So there's always going to be something and then today now we came up with the one there I don't know if you ever heard of there being our lady being that <laughs> blessed the, the, can, the blessed candle yes, represent yes. it's, yeah. it's something that <laughs> I remember once talking to Monsieur Jean the founder of the Herald and in a conversation with him I mentioned hey Monsieur Jean is beautiful because till the end of our lives till the end I'm sorry till the end of the world to the last man they'll always be learning something new about our lady each person will understand something new about our blessed mother without ever running out of new things and he would angry at me no you're wrong you won't have you, we don't don't think that we'll be learning new things till the end of the world we'll be learning new things till the end of eternity yeah. Yeah. Wow. for all yes, eternity yes. for all eternity there'll be something new for us to learn about our lady because if, i mean our lady saint louis teaches is where god so to speak ran out of himself yeah. he could not have done something mm. more than what he did yeah So I mean imagine an artist who does a painting which he does it so well now whatever I do will be less than this I can this I've given myself entirely to it's the and, greatest I can do in my life that, that's something for saint saint as mom for said but it's something like uh, you could say very audacious because how can god god's infinite yeah, yeah. but still you see there because he could if everything. he did anything else beyond that that person would be infinite that person would be another god yeah And so that cannot be God. Cannot create another God. He would not be God if he could. So yes, he did just <laughs> exactly at the maximum he Max. could do without making another God. He did. And of course, so he's <laughs> when he created his own mother. Yeah. So he, yeah. of course, he was going to do. It's like something absurd. Like absurd. Yeah, it's absurd, but yeah. so if he was the creator, he's going. He's not going to yeah. just yeah. put. You know, he's going to put everything that he can. Yeah. Into the, that creation, and that's what. That's a blessed mother. And that's her. And that's why those people like. You're saying about the consecration to our lady yeah. there when we consecrate ourselves to her as slaves of love people might think oh boy what I mean it's like oh, what do we mean be a slave of our blessed mother how's that so but we become a part of her yeah. we're become her property but so if we become her property she's going to do everything for us so, I mean it's we have to it's not that we just okay make our consecrations lay back and everything's no yeah. but We are her property, and she she'll be acting within us. If you let yourself, just let yeah. her act in you. Yeah, just be open to her. Just yeah, and that's the thing. Like you said there, when you made your consecration, thing that things started. Yeah, made, it became things became clear is because yeah, yeah, it's our blessed mother. That's because yeah. the candle, like like you said, each one of us are candles. Especially nowadays, we look at the world nowadays. Yeah, it's, you could almost say I think it would personally think that it would. darker now than it was before the coming of our lord in a certain sense because yes. as after coming our lord we had all the grace we had all the explicitation yeah. we had everything the teachings that we received and then so the much rejection greater is that what we have received is so much greater the rejection and the rejection so mercy was rejected our lord yeah. came to give mercy and that yeah, mercy was reject, reje- is and rejected so it's like, today, right? so like you and you said that being consecrated to our lady we yeah. become that candle yeah that flame in the world this dark the world that's darkness and So the yeah. more that yes. consecrate themselves to Our Lady, the more that you could say the light exactly. be spreading throughout the world. Yes, the, uh, in a certain sense, um, in a certain sense. And, uh, well, sorry, yeah, before ahead. you go, no, no. I said, and this light that will spread in the world will not go out. Yeah, that's no. what the best candle is, right? True. In the darkness, the light will not go out. I think that's 
the more profound meaning of this that the uh, uh i don't know if we didn't speak about that right about this the what about the there is a uh, they say that the blessed candles won't go out during the darkness and the three days of darkness, three days of darkness. okay yes. yeah there is a revelation it's a private revelation which was to blessed anna maria tejaji anna maria tejaji yeah exactly yeah. where she speaks about and it's a private revelation so we don't have to believe in it as we believe in the gospels it's a private revelation but it, it is, is trustworthy because it comes from somebody who has been beatified by the church but yes. then this private revelation like all revelations god gives it's not something mathematical the corpus was for i mean it's in a mysterious language which you don't understand which which requires interpretation which requires just like she received the grace to be able to understand it i'm sorry to to receive it and transmit it to others we receive we require other graces to interpret it interpret in the right way yeah. so could it be something very literal that literally it will be dark it may be or may not be i would not lose my faith in her because of this yeah. and what she said yeah. there are symbolic ways in which it can come the three days will they be three times it, 24 hours yeah. maybe maybe not it is mysterious but like you said one way of understanding it would be maybe not the only way is that we are already in the three days of darkness in a certain sense certain sense yeah looks like the, it looks like the devil is is loose it looks yeah. like the church has, has died it sometimes we Some, have the impression like the light of the church has gone mm-hmm. out we yeah. have this but the church can never die true then because all Jesus promised him promised the church his church that but the gates of hell will not prevail against yeah. so no matter no ma- what things appear to be it can never happen yeah. in reality and what where is the life of the church the life of the church is within what is the church the church is the group of the faithful the mystical body of christ that's composed of the faithful and those who have the faith the faithful in today's world mm-hmm. the church is alive in us in each and every yeah. one of us saint john says in the beginning of his gospel light came into the world and the darkness tried to put it out but they were not able to do it yeah. this is our yes. jesus christ but mm. this happens christianus alter christus to all the christians who are called to be other christ this happens to each and every one of us we are lights as long as we continue christians we continue true catholics slaves of our lady we we are firm in our faith there's something which cannot be put out in us true and i think that's the most important thing you know, to be the slave of our lady because when our lord died of course god doesn't die but he died in his humanity the only thing that that kept the the church alive was our lady and i think now when it seems like the church has died and to be a slave of our lady is the only way to in a certain sense yes i mean implicitly at least implicitly because then again everything comes through our lady she's a mediatrix of all graces yeah. all the graces we receive is is yeah. through her there's nothing no grace that anybody receives yeah. doesn't come through her saint uh, louis de montfort says is that you don't need to have worry about exaggerating about our lady you can never say enough there's only one thing you cannot say about our lady that she is god. god besides that anything you say about her anything any praise of her that you proclaim fall short fall short fall short of exactly so this worry of no uh, can i did i go too far in the praise of our lady no we went too short no but what about jesus he's happy with him he's he happy wants, with him of course <laughs> he wants you to praise her exactly lady. many of the graces that we don't receive in our lives of course our lord is absolutely just he is god and he's also absolutely merciful but his justice is always present so well, a, mercy can't exists without justice on yeah. on the, in the other hand so it has exactly. to both go hand in hand yeah. there's a a saint who I I don't know if you remember who it was I miss out it uh, I I forget who the who she was but anyway who said don't make a monster of god telling that he has two arms justice and mercy and one arm is longer than the other mercy is longer it'd be a monster yeah. <laughs> I mean but so to speak in a certain sense doctor Neil says that god in a found a way, way to make his mercy bigger than his justice was by creating our lady Man, because in true. her we find the mercy, mercy without the infinite justice of god true. not that she's unjust but in her mercy has a much bigger light it remind, reminds you of this thing time ago uh, i talked to dr plinio yeah and he was talking about seeing a person they die and they have their their judgment yeah and if the person was had devotion to to our blessed mother and everything would come there she would be there with the person and it would come say imagine imagine being the judgment there in front of our lord and everything and the person none of us are perfect nobody has that without god's mercy without it's impossible so but he would imagine there at the end there like the person the, all the sins being put on that scale there and nothing on the other side it's like 
So it's like, okay, you're going to be condemned. Yeah. And then she, being our advocate, but she's also the mother of the judge. <laughs> so after everything, she would go to her, to her son there and say, look, okay, I know he doesn't deserve it, but do it for me. Yes. And then, so then Dr. Plain would say, then the judge would say, well, in that case, your case, is, your case is one because it's her. And the God's case. justice was satisfied. Was satisfied. Because of her merits and not us. Yeah. Because, of course, the merits, absolutely speaking, is exclusively right. our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. But we have to receive, we have to be willing to receive the yes, merits so. in us. And if we are not willing to do that, at least our lady, we let our lady on her, if she can do it for me, yeah. it works. In fact, Dr. Nia said this once that people are afraid of condemning themselves. And in fact, we find, unfortunately, in today's Condemn. Condemning going to hell. Yeah. Oh. Unfortunately, in today's world, you have to be blind to not say that nobody's condemned, that there are huge numbers of people we see. I mean, only God can judge the soul. But we see the state of sin. Anyway. They want to go to hell. They exactly. declare it. They yeah. say yeah. that. They, they. And there are people who exactly fail up pride and right. saying that. But, but, when you look at Our Lady, He said, if somebody wants to be saved and is terrified of going to hell, calm down. If you want to be saved, unless you're brutal you are, you are evil with our lady you go against yeah. her you don't want to do. that's the only case in which uh, you cannot be saved I mean sometimes we do find cases like that but even so you was like you, the person's rule you have the famous case of the Indian there with uh, our lady in, in Venezuela Coromoto. Lady Coromoto. Yeah. I mean he even no tell, tell the case I'm sure more well, well. it's, it's our lady appeared to him I don't know the whole story in the details but came to a point where he threw because he was going to be a Catholic, and then he left. He was uh, yeah. he used to live in the forest, a yeah. tribal Indian, uh, and then he uh, he was persecuted by Ali. He would she would yeah, keep she appearing, would to, appearing him. to him. And he didn't want to have anything yeah. to do with it. At one point, where he picked up a stone and threw it at him, at yeah. her, at her, and then that's what became wow. the statue. It transformed the into the famous. Stone into a statue. Yeah, well, that was the one that was oh. carved out after it became the <laughs> became the. It seems like it's it's not very big the the original I statue am? there, yeah. but I mean it got to that point, but she still converted him. The end of In his the, life. The end of his life, died. he died. Yeah. It's a, but you no, see, even after even after the stone becoming a statue, he, he didn't convert. Well, he no. died shortly afterwards. Oh. So it was, but it was like doesn't matter. Even he came to that no, point. But then he where knew. I mean, he was having an apparition of Our Lady. If he didn't convert yeah. because of Our Lady, he would not convert because it was too nice. But but you see how even it got to that point yeah. where the person attacked Our Lady. Yeah. But she still went after to. But to, in today's world, we find sometimes, unfortunately, yeah, cases no, it's, it's worse than this. Worse than that. So other day, somebody told me it was quite sad of a man who was dying. And uh, one of her priests went over to attend him. And he had gone away from the church. And as he was dying, his wife, I don't even know if it was his wife, or somebody who was with him, a lady, she called the priest. And told him he had left the church. And she had left the church with him. And before dying, she was worried for his soul and she wanted to try and save him. To save his, yeah. It's interesting because the person was really convinced of what she was doing herself. She would not, anyway, she called a priest. The priest goes, starts talking to him. And he says, no, I don't want to, I don't want to change my life. Uh, no, he tells us, I'm going to confess directly to Jesus. I don't want to confess to a Catholic priest. Because I left the Catholic church. And the priest replied to him, my son, either you're right or you're wrong. No, just remember this. Let's suppose that you're wrong. That what you're saying is not true. You'll have to pay the consequence for all of eternity. Are you sure you're doing what you want to, what you want to do? I got stuck. No, wait, no, not like that. I want to give me some time to think. Then he stopped. Then he could, they could make out the, the fight of the garden angels and the devil yeah. inside him. Suddenly he screamed, and that's not a sign of God. When God enters, he enters with peace. No, I don't yeah. want it. Go away. Then the priest said, Fine, don't worry. I'm going away. I live three hours from here. I came here because they asked me to come and attend your soul. I'm here now. You can call me at any time in the night, two in the morning. If you change your mind, you can call me. I moment will. before it, I'm going to leave my house, come here running to get him. Because no matter what you do to me, I'm still willing to help you whenever you want. And I'm going to pray to Our Lady for you. So, self confidence, he turned and left. Then he started screaming, No, Our Lady, I don't want. Mary, I reject. I don't want to have anything to do with her. Don't pray to her for me. I don't want her to help me. And uh, even if I expect a priest, Mary, I will not accept. This I don't want. It's strong. And then yeah, the priest, oh, that is, he turned his back, greeted the man. Went out. He had just taken a few steps when they came. Oh, the man just died. 
My goodness. I mean, nobody this knows is, yeah. what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. The person can still receive a grace. Technically, he can. But, but... It's very, very difficult after you're taking... Yeah. So, God wants to... Um, there's another thing also Dr. Neer tells that Our Lady, in spite of all her mercy, she's the most merciful of all people when she wants to save. Yeah. There are moments when she acts as a go, act, go, agent of God's justice. There are moments when she applies punishments. Mm-hmm. He imagined this, that imagine the king who has many villages, many towns, cities in his reign, in his kingdom. And he hears that a certain city has revolted against him and he wants to save them. So he sends messengers to try and talk to them to make them come back to the right path. And that city revolts. They don't accept. They treat the messengers badly. But he knows that his mother was born inside that city. Mm-hmm. So he sends a huge army with his mother and tells my mother, I don't want to destroy them. I want to save them. But the state that they are, they don't want to listen to me. Who knows? Since you are one of them, who knows? At least to you that they will listen. That is what God does to us. Our lady who, in spite of all the brutality that we do towards God, he tries to send his own mother to somehow try and save us. Now, Dr. Leo continues the story. The mother goes, she talks to them, they convert. That's one way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Yeah. That's excellent. But if the mother goes and they are brute towards the mother, I would find it very natural that the king says, my mother, I tried to hold my justice till now. I sent you, even to you, you they were brute, they were evil towards you. Mm-hmm. Rude. They were rude. Rude. And exactly. Yeah, and brutish there. I mean, uh, everything just... the Now, what I want you is that you give the command for the army to destroy that village or that city. And it would make sense. Yeah. She would be acting justly out of love for her son. So Our Lady, who is the the queen of mercy, she's also yeah, the also queen of justice. justice. But then God wants to use her to, her so to too. speak, go over his justice. But if you reject that... And how are you going to... Exactly. So I remember he's there in Canada, you have the, the Jehovah Witness that come to the houses and everything there. And in the case of a, a Portuguese fellow that received them and then in his house. And of course, being a good Portuguese, he had a big statue of Our Lady of Fatima in, in, his, in his house. Yeah. And the, can you imagine, you go in somebody's house and what did they start doing these Jehovah Witnesses? They start attacking our blessed mother, mm. like saying all kinds of things. And he stayed quiet, the man. And then it came at the end when they finished, okay, now you have to stay and listen to what I'm going to say. Mm. said, in your house, do you have a picture of your, of your mother and your family? Yes, I do. So, okay, when you get back, home, I want you to get that picture of your mother, smash it and throw it in the fireplace and burn it. Oh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Why would I? T- if you can, can't do that with your own mother, how can you do that with Jesus' mother? Huh. So that's the thing. I mean, it's, yeah. it's only natural. Like you said there, the king there, they mistreated his mother. Yeah. You think our Lord's going to just, you mistreating our blessed mother, his mother there, he's going to just, Oh, he's if good. A, if a normal son yeah. did that, it would be a sin. If he did not, if he did not protect his own mother, if he did yes. not respect oh, yeah. it, all, it's one of the ten commandments. It can't be that the divine legislator who gave us these commandments does not practice he's, it yeah. himself. Of course. I mean, you can't say, you know, uh, it would be blasphemous for somebody to say, "Allah was a murderer." Oh, how can you say that? No, he because he made the commandments. He's not obliged to fulfill them, but he made the commandments according to his soul. The commandments reflect to us yeah. how we should be like our Lord. Same thing applies with the fourth commandment, honor their father and mother. So, yeah. brothers, but it's it. been a pretty good time conversing now, but uh, <laughs> time is already gone. And we yeah. didn't even speak about St. Blaise, right? St. <laughs> Blaise would be a... <laughs> that's, yeah, I that's guess it'd have to be another, another one there. Yeah. But. The blessing for the 3rd of February. <laughs> yes. The special the blessing. Throat, yes. yeah. Exactly. But anyway, I think it was very fruitful, at least for me it was. I received graces during this conversation. Yeah, I think we all did. It was yeah. very... Yes. Let's pray that uh, all those who watched us, that they received this as well. <laughs> And we encourage all those who are watching us now to spread this light. Spread. If you if you are a slave of Our Lady, excellent. But you're a light, a candle which has to light others. Go ahead, do that. If you're not yet, take a look. Take a look at the link in the description. And it's really good that you participate in, the, in these special graces that Our Lady wants to give each and every one of us, especially in our world. So let's pray for this. And let's pray for that so that we may be true blessed candles in, in these days we are living. In this day the church is living. Uh, so let's pray this. Mm-hmm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Saint Simeon, pray, pray for, for us. Saint Blaise, 
Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Salve Maria.